I want to take a few minutes to explain what's behind CDF, how it works, why it's such a big leap forward, and what you can use it for. CDF is a new kind of active document. The idea is to help communicate the world's quantitative ideas much better than, than has been possible before. And there are many layers of technology that we've built up over many years to make this possible. But rather than look first at, at what we're launching here, I wanted to talk through some of the problems today in communicating ideas. Today's online documents are flat, lifeless and inactive. It's a bit like yesterday's paper. What's happened is we've taken traditional paper-based communications and put them online. But what we haven't done up until now is reconceptualized what's possible based on new technology. One example, scientific papers. Where is the data in the paper? Why aren't algorithms part of a standard write-up? How do you rerun the code? How do you go through the simulation that's there? Governments spend $500 billion a year funding R&D like this, and yet the result is dead documents. We should demand more. We don't need communication problems like climate gate exposed. Another example, business presentations. Management can't usually test assumptions. You look at PowerPoint presentations, whatever your analyst has produced, and you can't really see what's how to change things and what happens when you change those things. You make all or nothing decisions. We should demand more in business presentations. We should demand interactivity where you can really test assumptions in real time. Let's take another example, textbooks. How do students explore ideas? How do you get intuition? Who's driving, the author or the student? We can do so much better if we have interactive textbooks where the student can push their own path, their own ideas through uh, through the material that the authors laid out. We should demand interactivity in textbooks. So the idea of CDFs is to make documents come alive with the power of computation, to have a format as every day as a document, but as interactive as an app. To achieve that, easy to author interactivity has to be at CDF's core. And we want to set up where authors don't have to compress their ideas to go down the, the communication pipe between author and reader, just so that the reader can uncompress it at the other end. We want this very broad pipe of communication between author and reader. So first, I thought I'd talk about a key element of CDF's The Knowledge App. Here's an example. We've got gas bouncing around a box, and we can change parameters of the gas, number of atoms, for example, container size, even the temperature. And we can see how it changes the model, what's actually happening in real time, what the simulation actually produces. It's physics happening as you play with it right inside our presentation here. So much richer than the textbook with a dead diagram. And I can drive it. So that's a key element. What does this mean? Well, rather than talk more concepts, let's look at some sample CDFs which show knowledge apps and some of the other elements too. So here's an example of a apparently traditional report, in this case on hurricane insurance uh, for the state of Texas. Now as you scroll down, you notice suddenly that you get to a figure. But it's not a normal diagram, it's an interactive diagram. It's something where you can actually try the parameters, change them and see what happens. And here we have another one. Again, change the capitalization ratio. See what happens. So while one's looking through this or presenting it or the reader has this, they can actually see what assumptions were made, try their own and see how that affects the conclusions. Most of us have to deal with financial reports of some description, whether for pensions or mortgages or whatever. Here's an example that's so much more usable than traditional dead documents that one gets. You can change assumptions for your pension. You can see how that affects what you would expect at retirement. We should demand these kinds of interactive documents from finance companies. When we look at the media, we see increasing video and other kinds of pre-generated content, but not so much interactive content that you can drive that's live. So here we have an example uh, 
earthquakes and how that this was made after the Japanese earthquake and how different earthquakes work. Seismic waves, for example, the different kinds of waves and uh, how, uh, how they go through the system. We can even rotate the model in situ as we look at it. So this is the typical sort of use of CDF plugged in part screen into a uh, into a typical media outlet and it makes it so much come to life it makes much more value for the content that's there. This is an example of a calculus book. This was published by Pearson with some pre-release CDF technology and you can see it actually works. Students can actually interact with it and see how parameters change what they're looking at, get a real feel for the maths that they're, that they're looking at. So much more powerful than a traditional textbook. Here's an example where we've built out a whole application using CDF. This is business intelligence on Wolfram Alpha advertisements and how they're doing. And it's very interactive. It uses the full computation of Mathematica's power and what underlies CDF to produce high quality reports in a fraction of the time that you'd normally take to build these and with much more interactivity. This is pulling live data in at the time we're running the report. So those were a few examples of CDFs in action. But what is the CDF standard? Well really it's a knowledge powered computation container as I said, it's as everyday as a document, but as interactive as an app. It's run using a free player that either plugs in part screen, full screen, or is standalone, and in the future is online as well, so we'll have a purely server-side solution. Key to the CDF standard is easy to author interactivity. The idea that everyone, not just programmers, can, can author the interactivity that's so central to, to making CDFs come alive. And when you play them, you're actually computing results live. You're not just pre-generating the interactivity and running through what you've pre-generated. That's central to our idea of what CDF is and what we mean by a computation-powered knowledge container. So how does our kind of CDF interactivity compare with traditional interactivity that's claimed for other formats? Well, I think it breaks down into a couple of categories. There are those that simply deal with... Uh, static content though perhaps allow you to run through many images of it videos and so forth I put PDF and traditional tech math type setting system in that category and there are those where you can do interactivity but it's typically authored by real programmers people who are professionals uh, at programming rather than the the normal authors of the actual content things like flash what CDF is trying to do is make the authoring easy enough for for the normal content producers to, to do and allow true interactivity where the results are live. You can navigate through them yourself through a path that you choose. It's a bit like imagining a terrain laid out by an author. Traditional interactivity puts a railroad on that terrain and you the reader are driving down that railroad or even just being a passenger and perhaps you're lucky with some, some branch lines that you can go down. But pretty much you're fixed in where you can go. You can decide when and where, but that's a, a, when and how fast. But that's kind of what you're fixed to. Contrast that to what we're doing. CDF is renting the four-wheel drive. You can drive it wherever you want on the terrain. You can decide where to go. And when you drive, you understand the direction much better. So interactivity and knowledge apps that we've mostly been talking about so far are not the only unusual aspect of CDF. We're also almost unique in doing semantic faithful math type setting, allowing you to have math represented traditionally but working, computing directly from it. Here's an example of an integral and you see it has traditional style out and you can select different bits semantically and you can then reuse that content, let's say, to do a 3D plot. And this is an active plot that you can rotate and use, all right here in the document. 
So another unusual aspect of CDF are the range of navigation controls that you can find within documents. This is the earlier example we found from the calculus book. And you see there are what we call sections and hierarchies associated with those with the cells. You can put together tables of contents that are scrollable. And there are many other features like outline views that we can have. We can also retarget content, like turning that document into a slideshow. So what we're doing here is to place the breaks, uh, tell the CDF generator what breaks to put in, how to break those into slides, and then have a slide environment as the output. And the interactivity is maintained throughout this. So as you look through, you see the typeset math and you also see the interactive examples as you did before. We've repurposed this in just a few seconds. So I wanted to turn to key technology that's let us build the CDF standard when others haven't. Central to this is our belief in automation and making sure that we can build up many layers of automation and democratize computation that underlies the power of CDFs. Now, of course, you also need the computational power, and we're the world leaders in, in producing that with our Mathematica standard and, and Wolfram Alpha and uh, many other aspects to our technology. So another important ingredient of our technology is representing everything symbolically, whether it's computation, interface, interactivity, or documents. So if we look at the CDF document and we open the cell that contains the word symbolic document, you can see it's just a symbolic function like every other aspect of our technology. And this unification gives tremendous power across different areas of the system. So another key aspect for us is interface and in particular optimizing interfaces for different situations. Meaning that you have the right interface to immediately interact with content, read it, or indeed author it. In the end, the battleground for everyday interactivity is ease of authoring. So I'd like to explain how we do authoring for CDFs with an example live. Here I am, hello everyone. We have a live video feed right here in our CDF. And what we'd like to do first is just do a simple edge detect of me live and uh, build up an expression for that to start with. So there I am with my edge detected. Now what we'd like to do is turn this into an app where we can change parameters uh, as we go. So we're going to not only just have edge detection uh, for the default value, but we're also going to allow different values of the edge detection. And we're also going to allow different uh, different kinds of image analysis as well. So here in just a few seconds we've built a little app with a parameter control for the level of the effect and some different image processing effects like blurring and image rotating. There I am upside down. And what's really neat is we can now just fold this right back up so that all you see in the in the document is just the resulting app for the reader to use. But if you want to look under the surface, you can find the code. So that's a simple example of authoring the interactive element of a CDF. So that was us building an interactive app inside a CDF. But is that easy for everyone? A little while ago, we launched our site demonstrations.wolfram.com using some of the technology that's now in CDF to allow people to build this interactivity. So as of today, we have 7,125 demonstrations already on the site with thousands of authors contributing them. And these are not programmers, mostly. These are researchers, teachers, journalists, even their students. This is a good slice of everyone. Now let's pick an example. I found one earlier on bats and the bat occupancy at a wind facility in California. This seemed kind of cool. How did bats affect uh, the abilities of the wind facility? 
and this was a model built and just put here to communicate an idea. It was easy enough to author that somebody bothered to author it and put it here. And that's the key to the success of CDFs. It's easy enough for citizen authoring. But is CDF authoring easy enough for everyone? Well, I think it can get one step better. Right now, we're at the level where anyone who could make an Excel macro should easily be able to learn how to make interactivity for CDFs. Where I'd like to be is that anyone who could make an Excel chart could make interactivity in CDFs. Now, one of the ways we're going to achieve this is through Wolfram Alpha linguistics. Being able to type in open-ended linguistics and have Wolfram Alpha query these and not only take you to an answer, but take you to a fully interactive answer. Like this Blur example. We just typed in Blur image of Abraham Lincoln with Radius X. And it's produced a whole mini application as part of a CDF right there, ready. You'll see this technology emerging shortly. So we have a long way to go to make authoring every day for everyone, but we're an awful lot further along than anyone has been before CDF. Well, I want to talk about how we, Wolfram, got into this. We've had this enduring vision to democratize computation, to take it out of just being for specialists and allow it to be for everyone and to get the benefits of that. Over two decades ago, we built and released Mathematica, a system used widely across all technical disciplines, from Nobel Prize winners down to primary school children. We then launched Wolfram Alpha in 2009, which injected knowledge into the computation we were doing. So we now had a mixture of computational knowledge and the ability to compute from it. So that's why I describe us as the company where computation meets knowledge. Now, our technology is also very much an enterprise computation platform. People build big systems with it. And indeed, Wolfram Alpha, in a sense, is an application of our technology platform. It's completely built with Mathematica technology and runs with a cloud Mathematica installation. We're in many verticals, from engineering to science to finance to many others besides, and of course, education. Now, one of the great things of having this history is that we already have many people who know the kind of programming that I showed to make the interactive elements of CDFs. In fact, we have a million CDF programmers already around the world. And that's a great base from which to launch a new format. So I wanted to finish this introduction to CDF by putting it in a bit of historical context. Over the years, Many things have been turned from something where you need to get a professional to do the work for you to something where it's, the expression gets personal. From word processing to TAC, the mathematical typesetting system, which for the first time allowed actual mathematical authors to, to make their own papers. Through graphic software to desktop publishing, a great innovation which allowed people to personally lay out things that they wanted on the page. And, and what that in particular achieved was things got much better laid out. People bothered to do it. It was worth the effort. Of course, the web, a tremendous personal expression system for finding facts, for distribution of things, um, that's obviously transformed many things. And what we're doing with CDF, I call it a personal interactivity production system. For the first time, you, the author, can make interactivity yourself. You don't need to go off to somebody else to make it. And that's why it's practical as an everyday thing to do. And that's why we should also be demanding CDF type of interactivity for all the kinds of quantitative and technical things we look at. Please explore our CDF site more. Let us know what you think and come back with uh, any questions you have. We look forward to seeing all the ways in which you use computational documents to improve your communication with others.